Hey there, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us this Thursday afternoon for our live webinar. I'm Leah College, an investment counselor here at Real Wealth Network. And today our webinar is all about investor readiness in a seller's market. And I feel like right out, right out of the gate, I've got to apologize for a little bit of a bait and switch. Um, all of our emails to you guys said that all four investment counselors are going to be here. And as you can see, there's only three of us. Uh, so we made that announcement before we, we knew that the funniest and maybe most knowledgeable part of our, of our uh, quartet had dental surgery so he is lurking in the wings um but today it's just the three of us mr joe tory in the bay area and aristotle compass down in socal hey guys hey, Le hey leah hi leah hey joe so we're really looking forward to doing this webinar guys because um i think I know I am feeling a little bit like a broken record when I'm talking to clients lately. Uh, the market is kind of extreme right now. Um, inventory is is really, really tight and it's requiring a slightly different approach than certainly what we were doing last year. Um, so I know I speak for myself certainly and, and maybe the guys as well that we, we found that it would be really beneficial if we could just kind of level set, talk about what we're seeing kind of to our broader audience, give you guys some good uh, straight talk about you know what kind of expectations you should be having in this market and then also give you some good pointers. Um, so we've got some personal anecdotes to share today, some stories from some of our investors, um, and we're really going to just really get down to what it is that we're seeing and where the opportunities still lie in today's crazy market. So before we jump in, let's get a little bit of disclaimer here. The strategies we're going to talk about might not be appropriate for everybody. There are options that we won't discuss today that might be more suitable for your specific situation. So you always want to consult with your own personal experts, your accountant, your tax advisor, and or your attorney to talk about your specific situation. As always, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Real estate purchases are always subject to investment risk, including the possible, of, uh, the possible loss of total amount invested. So while we have made every effort to bring you guys uh, accurate and current information today, the possibility of errors and or updates always exists. All right, so as I mentioned, this is kind of the, the flow that we're gonna follow today. We're gonna talk first about what we're seeing in the market, some of the characteristics um, that define a seller's market. And then we're gonna get into setting and managing expectations. Um, we still think it's a great time to be investing. Uh, we're all still investing, but we do think that you've got to kind of tailor your expectations and kind of really understand some of the challenges that you might run into um, as you're con continuing to expand. Joe's gonna talk to us a little bit. He is a brave soul who uh, pursued a 1031 exchange during the middle of this heated market. So he's gonna share with us a little bit of the ins and outs of, of completing a 1031 exchange. And then we're gonna end it talking about financing. Um, we know that interest rates are at record low so we've got a couple examples to show you guys how those are positively impacting deals and maybe one of the main reasons why it's still a fantastic time to be expanding and growing your portfolio so first let's define what is a seller's market and i had to put a couple memes in here i thought these were too perfect uh buying real estate today in march 2022 one is a whole heck of a lot like buying toilet paper in March of 2020. Uh, we all, I think, remember that. I love the second one here. I have a large bottle of hand sanitizer and a 50 count box of face masks and a 20 rolls of toilet paper looking to trade for a four bedroom house. Um, <laughs> I think these are, are spot on to kind of what we're seeing. So what are some of the characteristics of a seller's market? Well, first and foremost, the market is imbalanced. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people speak on this topic about what is what is a balanced market? Well, most would agree that a normal, normal housing market equilibrium means that it would have about six months of housing supply. Um, so the number of homes that are available on the market would be purchased within that six month period. That would That would be a balanced market. Today, most markets have somewhere between one and one and a half months of supply, which is nuts. In fact, More I've less. heard <laughs> unreal. Um, and I have heard some say that this is maybe the most out of whack they've ever seen um, the housing market, which 
I would say probably in areas like where you guys are living, Aristotle and, and Joe, it's probably uh, even even lower supply than this. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I've heard I heard someone the other day, a client, um, I, th I think they were in the Bay Area. They mentioned that they were considering putting an offer on a house and their agent let them know that the house already had you know, multiple offers and that it was already going, you know, three hundred thousand dollars above list price, um, which is obscene when you consider the fact that almost all of the inventory that we have on our website is below three hundred thousand um, dollars. So it just speaks to kind of the chaos of the market and how desperate people people are to get into a home. So this means a couple things for us at Real Wealth. You know, the, the bread and butter product at Real Wealth Network was a real income property, which is a rehabbed home. And this product was really plentiful on the heels of the last recession because there was lots of distressed property available. The banks had foreclosed on so many, uh, people were upside down on homes. So there was just lots and lots of opportunity to buy these distressed homes. So our teams could come in, get these properties way below market value, where there was still ample room to come in and improve them and renovate them and then take a profit for themselves, of course, for their risk and work, and then sell it to an investor. It was very plentiful. Well, today the tables have turned where there's such little distressed inventory. Um, in fact, with all the moratoriums and the mortgage forbearances, uh, there's arguably none in some markets coming, coming now into the market. And so it's made the job for our teams who are doing this renovate, these rehabbed homes, it's, it's made it more competitive for them to get those same deals. And when we have owner occupants that are competing over the same inventory, they're bidding up these homes. And so there's no meat on the bone to justify the risk or the effort that would be required to renovate a home and then turn around and sell it to an investor. So we've definitely realized that uh, the inventory of our real income properties is, is significantly less. Uh, teams before might have had you know, maybe 10 homes a week sometimes. Now they're maybe having one or two. Uh, in the event that they get a little handful of homes, uh, we as investment counselors often find out about it very quickly and uh, they're gone like that. So um, it definitely has changed the landscape for people who are looking for uh, real income properties. And then of course, on the new construction side, we were kind of seeing this as the opportunity back in August and September. Um, you know, we know just when, you know, the market is like this, uh, it, it, there's a huge opportunity for builders to come in and create supply. They can come in and stand in that gap. So builders are scrambling to step in that void to meet that demand. But at the same time, we're experiencing supply chain issues. And so builders' costs are getting driven up as well. So we're seeing a little bit of inflating happening on the new build product as well. Um, we're also noticing that there's starting to become a little bit of a backlog in the new construction space. These builders can't create supply overnight. Um, and so we're, we're starting to see that as well. Almost all of the you know, new construction homes are starting to be a little bit delayed. But let's not be too down and sad about this. There are some advantages for us as property owners in a seller's market. So if you have checked your home value recently or the value of your current portfolio, uh, it's likely looking pretty good. Uh, you have probably seen some good equity growth and we expect that home values will continue to, to get pushed up a little bit. So this could be a great time to sell if you, if you should so be inclined. Um, great time to capture uh, the equity at top dollar. Uh, as Joe will mention, that can then result into some challenges with the 1031 exchange strategy because the same dynamics that make it a great time to sell do make it a challenging time to buy. Um, also, locking in pre-construction deals today oftentimes means that you are closing with instant equity in six to eight months from now. That's not a guarantee, but we have seen that um, in some of our markets pretty consistently. Of course, there's some disadvantages, and I think it's unfair to put prices increasing as an advantage and a disadvantage, but I guess it depends on which side of the equation you're on, but uh, prices are going up. So the entrance cost um, is, is getting up there. In fact, I've, 
I've had some painful conversations with investors that I connected with, you know, last year or 18 months ago. And, you know, they were nervous about investing at that time. Uh, they wanted to wait. They thought that, you know, maybe home prices will come down. So I'll just hang on. And now they're re-engaging. Uh, now that they see that the market is is what it is, and we're having to have these diff difficult conversations where that same home is now twenty, sometimes forty thousand dollars more expensive than it was when they were considering the opportunity to begin with. Not to mention the fact that the time horizon is longer. So, um, that, yeah, prices are are definitely going up. This makes it really hard for you as a buyer to negotiate for price reductions because. Why would they lower a price for you? If you pass on this home, there's 10 guys right behind you that, that will take it. So um, your negotiating power is lost a little bit. Cap rates are starting to be compressed. So we know as property values go up, that rent to value ratio starts, starts getting compressed. And so we see less cash flow. And then I think this point is really important because it's, and again, probably more so in some markets than others, it's easy to get caught up into the hype of this and maybe the excitement of a bidding war um, and overpay for a property. So we do want to remind you that with real wealth teams, they have fixed pricing and they, they do not allow bidding wars. It's first come, first serve. So um, that's part of our aim today is to get you guys in the best position possible so that you can be the first one to um, speak out for a property and get it under contract. Of course, what makes us all feel uncomfortable about this is that it's fast paced. So we're feeling a little bit of pressure to make decisions. And normally we would want to maybe kick around an idea for a little bit longer, but uh, the market's just not allowing that same amount of time. 